Hello everyone, this is your host Professor Reha, and I owe an apology to Menzerich74. They left a comment ask on my S tier um, tier list, a more in-depth build, uh, specifically a leveling build for the Shaman Occultist and some starting out tips for that combination. I did not notice this, I liked it, and I hearted it, and I did not actually, and I even said I would make a video talking more about this combo, I'm pretty sure I misread this and did the Shaman Necromancers, so if I did, I apologize, Nanzarek, I didn't even realize. Um, so we're going to get into this right now, we're going to talk about leveling the Conjurer from levels uh, 1 all the way to 100, and some stops along the way that you really want to really kind of meet some goals, so to speak. So... When you're running a Conjurer, and again, we are talking about a focus on pet builds, the one thing we can absolutely be certain of is that our ultimate skill, our, well, I call it an ultimate, it's technically called an exclusive, is Primal Bond. We know we're going to want to be going to this because we want the pets, and the bleeding and the physical and, and the internal trauma damage, that's nice and all, but what we're really looking at is the pets. So we do have that definite lean here. With that in mind, between the two of these, you're going to want to start with the cultist, and you're going to want to go right into the familiar. You're going to want to just increase that to max right away. Now, the reason why you start with the familiar is because, assuming you're not skipping difficulty levels, the familiar will hard carry you through most of the beginning parts of the game. Actually, if you equip at least half decent equipment, it will carry you all the way up to Krieg in all honesty, and at that point you're just trying to distract Krieg away from your familiar, but by that point you'll also be higher than level 10. So, I mean, it's not really that big of a problem. Um, but just pump, pump all your points right into the familiar right away, alright? This, this crow will carry you through the early stages. Um, then, very often, you're going to want to go rapes right up to the mend flesh so the crow can heal you and itself. Uh, this is again going to help you all the way up to Krieg, but frankly it's not going to keep the crow alive too effectively against Krieg. It'll probably survive one blow, but you know, continued hits from Krieg is going to kill it at this point. Um, so you've got a couple of options here with Shaman. Now you've... Assuming you are focusing on pets very exclusively, you're not really going to be looking at the rest of this. The crow is nice and all. Um, if you're having problems with Krieg, you may want to temporarily put points into Drieg's Evil Eye, leaving the Crow where it is. Alternatively, you have another option. You could either rush to the Hellhound, which is personally what I recommend, and the reason why I recommend rushing to the Hellhound. So basically, for their first few levels, you're basically just an occultist. And the reason why is because you want the Hellhound specifically so it can die to Krieg. Notice that Blazing Death has a 25% reduction to enemies' health, plus the physical fire and chaos damage that happens when it dies. So in other words, what you want to do is you want to set, once you get your familiar, you basically let the familiar carry you through the game all the way until you get to the Hellhound. At this point, you want to set the crow to defensive so it stays as far away from enemies as possible, and heals you and your Hellhound. It will remain within some distance of you, so don't worry too much about it being out of healing range. It happens occasionally, but not very often. And in the early stages of the game, it's not really going to be that big of a deal. If it, if you're having a hard time keeping the crow close enough to you to heal you, put it on standard, but don't put it on aggressive. Either way, this is healing you and doing some elemental damage, but it's the hellhound that's really going to carry you through. So yes, essentially, what you are doing is using the crow to keep you alive, while you basically try to summon as many hellhounds at Krieg as possible for the express purpose of dying to him and having Blazing Death do the damage you need. It does work. Uh, it's definitely one of the weirder ways I've killed Krieg, but it does work. It can take a little while depending on how good your weapon is and how good you are at weaving in and out from his shockwaves. Um, if, you're, if you're not contributing, contributing any attacks, obviously it will take longer. Um, and it's good practice for dodging his shockwave and get it, you know, seeing that tell in time to get out of dodge before he actually stomps his foot. Um, but this is generally, if I was to go with this combination today, it's been a while since I've done this combination with this focus, 
Um, this is how I do it. This is how I used to do it with the Blazing Death. Uh, that was a good time. But that's... Before Krieg, you're really just trying to spam up to this, in all honesty. So by the time you hit Krieg, that's going to be... Let me see. Uh, that's 32. And that is... 48, 58, you want to be level 20. Sorry, I had to head math there. You want to be level 20 by the time you hit Krieg. I mean, you don't have to be. Uh, having a few points less in the Hellhound isn't going to matter a huge deal, because you're still, even at low levels, going to be doing, even at level just 1, it's a 10% reduction, but obviously the lower, the fewer points you have in the Hellhound, the longer it's going to take you to kill Krieg because this is, the death of the Hellhound is the primary way in which you are dealing damage to him. So if you want your Hellhound maxed, hit level 20. That's not too hard to do if you, you know, take your time and explore throughout the area. Uh, if you go to the Hallowed Hill from Burwich underneath the bridge, that really helps. The various quests you can do help as well. Um, if you have the... Forgotten Gods DLC, popping into the Conclave of the Three and reading the books there can really help a lot as well, so that's really quite helpful. Uh, so you do have those options as well, but getting to level 20 before fighting Krieg is not too difficult. Um, but that is how I would recommend starting out, is just basically focusing purely on a cultist, leveling up to the Hellhound, and utilizing that. Most of your equipment should be increasing your pets the more you know, your pets are increased, the more damage they'll do. Obviously, the crow will be shooting Krieg at the same time, which is nice, but it's primarily going to be the Hellhound. And you'll find, I think, that he actually goes down pretty quick. It should only take you a few Hellhounds. Uh, if, you're, if you're attacking with him, it should take, oh gosh, maybe... I want to say four or five, but I can't remember off the top of my head. It's been a while. It's been a year since I've actually done it this way. <laughs> But, uh, at least in the early stages, let me rephrase that, in Elite and, Leg and Ultimate Difficulty, if you've decided to skip over, that's obviously a lot harder. But I am assuming you're on Veteran or even Regular. Uh, so, that's how you really want to initially start it. And then once you kill Krieg, you go to your Shaman, and you want to oops, too many, rush to your Briarthorn. Now, there's a very specific reason why you want to rush your Briarthorn. This is another three, seven levels, so 27. And the re primary reason why you want to rush your Briarthorn is actually because you want at least your Briarthorn by the time you go up against Cronley, which he's kind of painy, um, but again, it's, it's a similar kind of scenario. But the Briarthorn really will at least help keep the adds that, you know, the, the side dudes that um, Cronley typically spawns, as well as helping to kind of crowd control against totems or combat shrines or what have you. Now, if at any particular time you're having a problem or you just need to grind for, you know, for experience or whatever, there are a couple of things I would really recommend you go for in terms of grinding. First off, before Krieg, if you really need to grind some some levels for the Hellhound, which you may, I would really recommend going for this, Salazar's Sovereign Blade. Now, the, the vitality damage doesn't really matter whether or not you choose to use that is up to you, but what's more important is that it is increasing the Hellhound and the Familiar by two, and you also get a delightful Harbinger as well, which will add extra damage onto your damage output when you fight Krieg. Now, this is specifically dropped by Salazar, and this is what the reason well, this is one of the two reasons why we're actually gonna go to the map. This is the Depraved Sanctuary. Now, if you haven't been through the Depraved Sanctuary, I'm assuming you probably have, but just in case you haven't, when you get to Burwich there is a the house immediately north, slightly to the right of the portal that has a lectern with a book. You pick up the book, you confront Dereni at Devil's Crossing, and you deliberately spare him. He gives you a key, and you can get to the iron door. Hold on, let me actually go to the map part here. 
you get to the iron, you rip the Burr Witch, and you go straight over here, and this door here, the Depraved Sanctuary, this is where you want to be farming for Krieg if you want your Hellhound stronger. Now, you really don't want to grind too much farther past level 20. Maybe you want to go a couple of uh, levels past level 20 for these stats, maybe up to 23, but I really wouldn't push it much farther than that because otherwise you're going to get too strong to really be able to uh, effectively get any rewards out of Cronley's gang, which might hurt you in the you know a little bit later on down the road. But, you know, you do want to go into the Depraved Sanctuary here, and you want to farm Salazar until you're somewhere between 20 and 23, if you haven't gotten there organically, or you just want the Sovereign Blade for the boost to the Hellhound and the Familiar. Now, if you happen to become very fond of Salazar's Sovereign Blade, uh, it's I would go back and farm this again at level 35. You'll most likely pick up a stronger one. Uh, monster and Frequents tend to increase in stats significantly every 15 or so levels. It really depends on the individual piece of equipment, but I've found 15 to be a pretty close approximation of how often Monster and Frequents boost up in damage. But for Veteran, at the very least, the enemy cap in the Depraved Sanctuary is 40, so you really don't want to farm there past 35, because it's just honestly not going to be too worth it. Um, and again, you don't want to get too far past 23 before Krieg, but the second reason you want to farm in the Depraved Sanctuary is the Depraved Sanctuary is absolutely loaded with cultists who can drop this, the Bloodsworn Codex. Now, if you happen to get this, then maybe leveling up to level 25 and putting a couple of points into the Briarthorn might be worthwhile, especially if you get a really good one of these that boosts either your Familiar or your Hellhound as well. So at an absolute top level, again, it depends on how good the Bloodsworn Codexes you get are, maybe go to 25. It's entirely up to you. Like I said, after you kill Krieg, you should be working towards your Briarthorn anyways, so you get them sooner or later, so equipping this ahead of time for the bonus to all pets isn't going to be too much of a problem anyways. Again, lo required level 20, so you'll definitely be able to equip this about the time you're fighting Krieg. Um, maybe you're using another offhand until you get the Briar Thorn, but this is very useful um, and something you can farm for. Again, every 15 or so levels, you're going to want to come back around level 35, see if you can get a better one. Although, frankly, if you can get to the Blood Grove, that's even more reliable for Bloodsworn Codexes. Um, so, you don't really necessarily need to go back to the Brave Sanctuary for these specifically, but if you're going back there for a Salazar's Blade, Sovereign Blade, that's perfectly fine as well. But if you need to grind for Krieg, that's where you want to go, is the Depraved Sanctuary. Now, back to the points here. So you've killed Krieg, you're working on the Briarthorn, maybe you're going to work on Cronley, maybe you want to be a little bit higher than good old level 27 or so. Maybe you want to hit 30. It's a personal preference. Well, again, a great place to farm would be for this, Hellion's Crest. Again, increasing your Hellhound even more, and that reduced mind control duration is actually not supremely useful, but there are bosses that, and even some heroes and nemeses, that will take over your pets and have them attack you. So if you get a, if you're lucky enough to get a Hellion's Crest with over 100% reduce mind control duration, you're really not going to be worrying about that at all. The rat here is just located right here in the Hanafi Mine, which is an old Orcovia. There's a bunch of entrances here. This is not where I know I would be there. Hanafi Mine entrance here, and there's another mine entrance here as well. Very easy to get to from the old Orcovia Rift, but if you're trying to level up to 27 to 30 for Cronley, you want to do it in the Hanafi Mine in the hopes that you get a Hellion's Crest to really boost your Hellhound even more. Again, by this time you're definitely past level 20, you're probably closer to 30, so, you know, again, you're not really going to have a problem with this, but this is something you're going to want to... This will probably be most of your farming will be done for this in Elite. Um, if you happen to get one while leveling up for um, Cronley, if you're having problems with him, great, but this isn't really the point, you really need to worry about it. Maybe, again, in Elite. I would worry about it more. But it's somewhere you can farm very safely. With a great monster and frequent item as well. And if you're wondering why I'm not recommending you farm for elite or um, legendary equipment, 
it's pretty tough to farm for those a lot of the times. There are some that are specific to specific bosses and stuff, but a lot of those are in are really only reasonably farmable in ultimate difficulty. So since I'm not I'm not going to assume you're starting in ultimate difficulty. I don't want to talk about those. And besides the fact I'm a big fan of monster frequency, and farming for monster and frequency is oftentimes way easier than farming for anything higher up. And again, monster and frequency. If you're lucky with your prefixes and suffixes, can actually oftentimes be individually more powerful than any individual elite or old, uh, legendary item. It really depends upon what it drops as. So let's say you kill Cronley somewhere between levels of 27 and 30. Great. Now you're moving on to the spoopy land of Skellingtons, which is fine. So at that particular point, you know you're really going to want to start possibly thinking about Wind Devil, and the reason why is because, and this is really only if you want something to do yourself, the Crow at this point, you actually may want to be increasing to here for Storm Spirit, you get some nice elemental damage increases, this really helps your Crow, this really helps your Hellhound, if you're armed with any weapon that does elemental damage, that'll really help you out, and it gives you free elemental resistance as well, which is just really nice. If this is the case, Maybe you want to go into Wind Devil, which is going to do electric damage, but primarily is eventually going to do Raging Tempest. Now, that's a personal preference. I personally don't like Wind Devils, so I don't build this very often. But it can really work well here. I know this from personal experience. It can really work out quite fantastically. But, again, it's your choice. Yeah. After all, you probably have realized that not 100% of your points are necessarily going to be going into full pets. Right? So... Okay, now what? Well, at this particular junction, you've got your Storm Spirit here. Maybe you want to go up and get good old Ground Slam. If you have a really good Blood Sworn Codex, like we talked about earlier, you actually will want to go for Ground Slam before Storm Spirit. Uh, but otherwise, it, you know, that's really the only change here. Ground Slam if you have a good Blood Sworn Codex, Storm Spirit otherwise or personal preference. Again, I'm not going to necessarily tell you 100% what you should be doing here, but that's personal preference there. At this particular point, you know, you're probably shaping up, you've probably gone through um, a lot of the homestead quests and etc. You're probably in the Blood Grove, and when you are, you know, leveling up and everything, Eventually, you're going to come to... You want to be at least level... You'll definitely be level 35 at this point. But eventually, you're going to come to Dark Veil. Vale. This is inescapable. And the boss at the end, right before the gate, drops the really nice Zarya's Pendant, which, as you can see, really can boost the damage of your Briarthorn and Hellhound by a substantial amount, as well as additional skills in Shaman. This is important later. But for now, what we're really focused on is the rather impressive 30% increase in damage for the Hellhound and the Briarthorn, which is really, really nice. Um, farming her isn't necessarily a bad idea if you ever need to. Uh, she's a bit painy to farm because it's quite a long trip. As you can see, the nearest rift is right here, so you actually have to go all the way up here. You have to work your way through all these guys. On the plus side, though, it is another opportunity to update your Bloodsworn Codex, which is really nice. And by this time, you definitely have the Briarthorn, and you probably have Ground Slime as well, and of course, this is increasing your Briarthorn's damage even further, which is really nice. So, that just makes a great place to overall farm as well. But you're going to keep on going here. You know, you're just going to kind of go through these. Good old Ember Claw, which is some nice fire damage there, which is, of course, is additionally boosted by Storm Spirit. And then Emboldening Presence is a really good time. Now, rushing to Ember Claw can really help out a lot. And if you really want to rush to um, Lightning Strike as well, that's a nice potential stun you've got there from your Crow. Extra Lightning Damage can really boost the Crow's damage output. Gives you these a special attack to really match the Ground Slam, right? So once you get Ground Slam on the Briarthorn, it's actually often more worthwhile to rush all the way up to Lightning Strike because that gives all three of your pets a special ability that they can bust out and do some extra damage with, which can really help. Now at this point, you're really going to have to make some decisions, but I'm going to just assume for the sake of arguments, you're going 100% pet here. 
Now, once you get, you know, a special attack for each of these two, run up to Emboldening Presence. Plus 50% all damage for all allies. If you are using Salazar's Sovereign Blade, you are melee, so you're going to get a, this benefit as well. So that's really nice. And you have this delightful Emboldening Presence going on. Now, at this point, you've got a couple of choices. You really do. You have 60 points left, and while you can absolutely go all the way over to here and get Hellfire, right? And you can get Bonds of Abyssmeal, and you can run all the way up here, and you can get Manipulation. You can see where you're going to encounter a point problem. You actually can't fully support 100% of the pets all the time. So it is roughly, very specifically, let me pull back here a little bit. It is at this point here, when you have roughly 60 points left, your last 60 points, that you're really going to have to make some very hard decisions here as to how you want to approach this. Because you can go 100% pet, in which case, if you are going to go 100% pet, you are going all the way up here, maxing Bonds of Bismuel and Manipulation, right? And then at this point, you're throwing on whatever points you want and whatever else you want. Maybe you want to put them into Hellfire, but Hellfire doesn't matter because the amount of fire damage you're probably busting out and the amount of chaos damage you're probably busting out is not very high. At this point, I really recommend dropping either the Familiar or the Hellhound. It's your choice which one you drop. And the reason why you really want to make a choice is because each of these will boost a particular type of build style. Because with the Conjurer, you have a glorious opportunity to have at least a small bit of hybrid here. I know you said you specifically wanted to focus on pets, but that's very impractical from a survival and a damage point of view. So while you can go into manipulation and also Bonzi Bismil, right? You don't necessarily have to, but that does really boost your pets, but you're not going to want all three pets. You're going to want to run two. And regardless of which one you pick, the Briarthorn is glorious, because he'll really boost your damage output through Emboldening Presence, and he will boost either one of your other pets. So the Briarthorn is the one pet you really want to keep, okay? So what you ultimately wind up with is going to depend on what kind of equipment you want or what, pe what pets you personally have preferred, because at this point in the game, you've seen the best sides and probably the worst sides of all three pets. You've seen the glorious healing and the incredible stunning potential of the crow, right? You've seen the best of the crow. You've seen the Emperor Claw and the incredible power of a dying summon hellhound or a hellhound. You could go into Hellfire and then into Infernal Breath, which are also glorious. You've all, you know, you've also seen the Briarthorn's glory with Ground Slam, which can potentially stun enemies as well, and the Bold Presence, which can really help you out with your survivability and damage output. So at this point, now you have to decide what do I really like. All right. So you've got some choices. Now, if you were going, if you are really determined, hey, I want all three pets. Okay, I can fully respect that. That's fine. But I would at least scale back on the Storm Spirit here. Keep the Crow primarily for the healing, if that's the case. Right? Leave the Hellhound where it is. And then pump up some points here. Go into Primal Bond. And then you put the rest of your points up here. Go into Manipulation and Bonds of Bismuel. And then pick your favorite. Do you like the crow? Storm spear, right? And probably this is this is what I would normally do if I was going to go 100%, because this is going to increase your crow. This is going to increase your hellhound. Your Briarthorn is a little left out. It'll also increase you if you're using an elemental damage weapon of any kind. It'll really help that as well, because your only other option is the hellfire, which is only really good if your weapon does fire and or chaos damage. Which, again, depends on what you get as your pickups. 
but you can do this as well. And if you're insistent on going 100% pets, this is what I'd probably go with. But frankly, you've got some slightly better choices. Like I said, you can do some very specific builds. Now, if you really like the crow and you're not so fond of the hellhound, drop the hellhound, capitalize on the crow, and then use your last 16 points to either go into wind devil, maybe you necessarily don't go all the way through, let's just assume for the sake of argument you don't go all the way through into this, right? actually going to be boosting your pets through your equipment and your skills here. So you maybe go want to go into Lightning Strike Crow, and then you want to go into Wind Devil, which will help your crow out a lot, equip an elemental weapon. And then at this particular point, you've got, again, a couple of options. You could theoretically go into Primal Strike if you have a two-handed weapon, go up to Torrent, right? And this will actually be, you could go all the way here, right? You could do this. This will really take advantage of Primal Bond's boost to physical, internal trauma, and bleeding damage, right? It'll boost your pets. You get the nice Raging Tempest. Now, personally, if I were you, I would drop Maelstrom, just because I hate it. I don't like the Wind Devils. I'll go into Torrent, and then just go into Storm Surge for a little bit of extra physical and bleeding damage, right? Uh, that's an option. Or alternatively, you could instead run Maelstrom, Storm Totem, and then use your last couple of points to just boost up here, and put a couple of points into Bonds of Bismil for a nice 20% boost to their health and energy regen, right? And get yourself some core attributes down here as well. You could do that with the crow. You could do savagery, but personally I've always personally preferred to support my pets. I usually go into Primal Strike and Torrent because the stun you know, right here, hold on, let me show this off. Usually what I'll go for is a rather magnificent Primal Strike. I'll max this out to get that nice physical and bleeding damage increased, and then I'll put my last points into Torrent here, so that way it can affect up to five targets. This will really spread out quite nicely, and chain stun multiple enemies, and then combined with your crow and your briarthorn, you know, your briarthorn's uh, ground slam, your crow's lightning strike, and etc., and you can really absolutely bust out three stuns in a row, and actually if you pull this back here, you can even grab some additional bleeding damage for storm surge, and this I think you will find to be very powerful and very effective um, towards the late game to the point where you can actually Primal Strike and then just spam Wind Devils for increased elemental damage, right? You have that option. Or, again, you could go into Storm Totems, which are incredibly powerful, and also get boosted by your Crow. So you can actually put these in the range of your Crow, and they'll zap the enemy with your Crow, which is also really nice. I just prefer the Primal Strike because it does allow you to take advantage of the Primal Bonds boost as well. Now you may be wondering why is Primal Bond so important. Well, first off, it has damage absorption, which is really nice. Second off, it boosts the damage of your pets by 74%, and increases their crit damage, which is really nice. And there's quite a variety of items in the game that increase Primal Bond as well. I'm not really going to talk too heavily about equipment at this point, but, you know, that is really quite delightful. Alternatively, you could go into the Hellhound, right? You've got that option. Now, if you're going to go into the Hellhound, because you're really fond of exploding Hellhounds, then you're going to want to go into this very interesting, very specific setup here. Right? You're going to max this all the way out here. Grab the Hellhound. And you're going to want to build Sigil of Consumption. Now this is what I usually go for, this is what I recommend for Hardcore, right? This heals you to some extent, right? You've got the 30% uh, of attack damage converted to health, those vitality damage, those chaos damage, those fire damage. And of course Hellfire will increase that even more, right? So you've got that, which is, you know, wonderful. Uh, if you were really paranoid, you could pull this back, 
right. And you could go into Mogdragon's Pact, which increases the physical damage of your pets, which is always a really nice time. And the reason why I don't recommend this with the crow is because first off, your crow doesn't do physical damage, and second off, if you're melee, you'll, your two melee pets, the Briarthorn and the Hellhound, will be right there. And the Hellhound does, in fact, do some decent amounts of physical damage. He deals physical damage when he explodes. He deals physical damage with his attacks. He deals non-physical damage with Emberclaw, granted, but he does deal physical damage with this, right? And this does, you know, 180... 184% of his weapon damage, claw and fang attacks are his weapon damage, technically. So you are still boosting the physical damage output of Ember Claw. I forgot that these are in here, whoops. I'll pull these up for a hot second. Which you can go into Mogdragon's Pact. And we actually can bust out Infernal Breath, and then we can go into Bonds of Bismeal. Or maybe you still want some form of bleeding damage or what have you. Maybe you want to go into Brute Force. Maybe you want to go into Devouring Swarm a little bit. You've got all those choices. Maybe you want to drop the Mogdragon's Pact completely. Maybe you still want to go into Primal Strike. Or maybe you want to go into Brute Force. You know? Get some nice bleeding damage there. A quarter of your attacks are going to heal you a little bit. You know, it's not bad. Um... But those are really the three ways you want to do it. Um, but that's generally how you want to start. Once you get past Cronley, really, you're just basically rushing your pets um, up to their special attacks. And after you get Emboldening Presence on the Briarthorn here, that's when you have to really make your decision to um, actually pick your uh, pick how how pet focused you're going to be. Once you get this. You have to make a decision on the other two. Which one of the other two you're keeping. Because I can tell you from personal experience that trying to run all three is not a great idea. And of course, what items you have are going to sway this to some extent as well. What mode you're doing, if you're playing with friends. Um, if you're playing with friends, I would recommend Summon Familiar because this heal here will also heal your allies too. So if you're playing with friends, I do lean more heavily towards the familiar. Unless, of course, your friends are dealing large quantities of chaos and fire damage, in which case, obviously, the Hellhound would be the better choice. It really depends on what your friends are doing. But that's really how I would recommend you approach this. Um, some other points that really you should be um, thinking about as well. You want to be level 40 before... You want to be level 40 by the time you get to the Ucking Bog, because you can get these really nifty Preval shoulder pads, starting from level 40, um, which are really nice, and this is specifically actually in a hidden area, so I'm going to show this to you specifically. This is in the Ugnan Bog. You can see this is south of the actual Ugnan Bog rift here. You just go south, you hug to the right, you explode um, this with dynamite, and you go in here, and here are the chests that potentially will drop this, but, you know, you want to be level 40 by the time you get there, and have this delightful of all shoulder pads, which are good. Uh, this is assuming, of course, you don't have better shoulder pads, and again, these are for level 40, you come back every 15 levels, farm for those, have a great time. Another thing you also want to be level 40 before Oikenbog 4 is because this can be found... Hold on. This is a bit interesting. So this is actually in Morndale, right? In Morndale, there is this good old dungeon, the Cinder Wastes, which you go into and then you just go down into the Fringes of Sanity, where you kill um, Vinal Velgoth, who you slap for potentially this. Now this is fairly interesting in case you want to do Vitality pets, uh, if you want your crow to do Vitality damage for some reason. Uh, the only time that I would really say this would be useful is if you're really focused in on a familiar Hellhound combination. Uh, which, what other things you're going to be adding onto that is going to primarily depend on, you know, what your other abilities are. Uh, so, you do have that as well. It's not something I use often, uh, but it is something interesting to think about. Beyond that, you've got really just this, which, again, you can really find, this is the boss of the Dark Veil Gate, 
you're definitely going to be over level 35 by the time you hit this guy, um, in all honesty. So, it's really not a question of, oh, you should be level 35 by this time. I mean, you're going to be level 20. You need to be level 20 for fighting. Well, I won't say need. But you should be pretty close to level 20 for fighting Krieg. So being level 35 by this point, if you do the Homestead stuff, and especially if you do the Pine Baron stuff first, easy. You'll easily make it to uh, level 35 long before you get to this dude. Um, but beyond that, for leveling, that's really what I would recommend. Um, again, just to recap, uh, undo class really quick just so I can reset all the points. This is a final recap. Your first few levels should be focused on just getting all the way up to here, maxing the familiar, maxing the heal to keep you alive, maxing the hellhound, fighting Krieg at least with this, somewhere between 17 and 20. Then at that point, you spam up to your Briarthorn. And then at this point, you either go for Storm Spirit, Ember Claw, and Lightning Strike, or you go for Ground Slam. I personally prefer Ground Slam first, out of preference for its longer stun. Again, personal preference. You can do it in any combination, but you do generally want to be approaching it from that perspective. Right? And then once you get Lightning Strike, you spam up the points to Emboldening Presence. Did I ever shoot? I did. Emboldening Presence, where at this point you are roughly... What level is this here? Um, why am I having brain cramps? Yep. Why can I not remember what level this would be? Uh, you're, you would be roughly level 70 at this point. Um, yeah, around level 70. Uh, my head math is terrible, uh, so don't, don't take my word on that. But roughly around level 70, you're going to need to make a permanent decision here as to how many pets you want to run, which pets you want to run, and your personal skill. I would, again, strongly recommend you pick up at least one skill for you to use personally, um, but you are looking for a pet focus, so obviously uh, I recommend this leveling path so that you can see sort of the best qualities of the pets, because after all, for pet builds, Hellfire doesn't matter. You know, the crow's elemental damage increase is going to help the Hellhound but the Hellfire is not really going to help the Crow, because the Crow does lightning damage, very little fire damage, and chaos damage going on there. Yes, it does provide a certain amount of inherent fire and chaos damage, but not enough that you would necessarily want to go out of your way for this. So, you do have that, but at this particular point, you've at least seen the pros and cons of each of the pets. And again, the Briarthorn is going to be a staple. I think you will find the Briarthorn to be the pet you really lean on the most, besides the Crow's healing, potentially. But at this point, it, around level 70 is where you're going to really want to be thinking about your long-term plans. And that's going to depend on what equipment you've got available and, you know, what you've decided your favorite pet is. But, you know, I hope this really helped in deciding how you want to level up. Although, by the way, one other quick question, uh, not question, uh, thing. If you wanted to stall your decision past level 70, uh, just level up to Primal Bond here. All right? This will bring you to, I think this is like, what, 10? Yeah, you're probably about 75, 77. I would, I actually, I think 77 is a bit more accurate. Uh, so if you want to stall your decision for another seven levels, go up to Primal Bond and then decide. Um, you, again, you can go for all three pets. I just really strongly recommend against it. First off, you're not going to have the points to support all three of them very effectively and still get and exclusive skill, you could drop Primal Bond in favor of um, Manipulation if you really want to, but I find this makes you significantly weaker enough where it's harder for you to survive. So do just keep that in mind. I do strongly recommend you pick up Primal Bond, and again, I do recommend a... Um, you could go into this as well, but again, it's not really recommended. 
Uh, I do recommend you, you know, pick up one skill for your own personal use. Again, dependent on your items. But I hope this helped you, um, Menzerich. I am sorry for the delay on this. I totally misunderstood your comment. Uh, that's on me. But I hope this is what you were looking for. And I can absolutely go into more detail on this class combination in general. But I felt your question was very specific, and I believe this answers what you were looking for. So, thank you very much for the request. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If other people enjoyed as well, please um, uh, like and subscribe if you don't please ignore me. And uh, if you have any other comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below. I do appreciate them, and I enjoy them a lot. And uh, have a great 24 hours.